recovery, that sign-up uh, dates will uh, have some common sense to them, that we more fully uh, utilize our CRP acreage, that we have some loan repayment delay for farmers' home borrowers, uh, and as also that we work with the uh, FEMA director to make sure that we have some consolidated strategy relative to disaster programs in South Dakota. Well, the state of South Dakota today set up a flood emergency hotline to try to help those affected by the high water to get some relief. Municipal officials and others with problems or emergencies arising from the flooding can call to get quick advice on what to do. The state plans to staff those phones from 8 in the morning until 6 in the evening. The hotline number is 605-773-5058. And to make matters worse, the persistent rains are already putting numerous South Dakota road construction projects way behind schedule this spring. But as Scott Bowden reports, contractors say they are still confident they will meet their deadlines. I got a lot of people calling wanting to go back to work, but we just can't put them to work, and we're not the only contractor in town that's like that. Tim Nelson is the contracting supervisor for the Western Ave Interchange and the 57th Ave Tunnel projects. All the rain this spring has not only been slowing his operations down, but he says it's also hurting his employees. Well, it's hurting our people because we can't hire all our people back to keep them busy. We can't hire people from Sioux Falls to keep them busy, and uh, everything's just falling behind. The biggest problem for Nelson is this tunnel on 57th Street, which will soon link northern Lincoln County developments to Louise Avenue. The tunnel is the controlling operation on the job. It requires the most amount of work. And uh, with the mud, we can't access in there. We're in about the lowest area here in Sioux Falls, I think. And but right Department of Transportation all Engineer all Steve Ramis is doing everything he can to help them out. We've pulled the crews off the tunnel, and they're working over on the structures. So hopefully we can get some of that work done early this year. So when we can get in the tunnel area, we can go full force over there and, and maybe catch up, maybe not. Ramis is confident these projects should be completed by their deadline of November 1st. It'll just mean when it does stop raining, workers will have to work extra hours to get it done. We work an average of a 10-hour day, but uh, we're going to have to go to 12s, and hopefully we don't have to start working Saturdays, and uh, it's just got the sun's got to shine. In Sioux Falls, Scott Bowden, News 5. And as though driving through water, running water, were not bad enough, this brings pothole problems in the streets is still a pain for motorists. As Beth Fuller tells us tonight, if you thought potholes were only an early spring problem, think again. Signs of spring are everywhere. Some you see, others you feel. Usually by this time of year, pothole problems fade away with other winter unpleasantries. But thanks to recent rainfall, the hot mix of asphalt and aggregate isn't sticking the way it should. And almost as soon as they're patched, the mix is worn away. I think we've been doing quite a job filling them every day. And we will uh, fix them more permanently come summer. The state is responsible for main streets like Minnesota and part of Cliff and East 10th. And for weeks, state crews have been working day and night, sun or snow, to make travel smoother for motorists. So until we get more consistent cooperation from Mother Nature, the surest sign of spring may be a flashing yellow arrow. In Sioux Falls, Beth Fuller, News 5. In a moment, a mystery illness invades Minnesota. It's a rash, it's a respiratory problem, but what is it? Coming up next on News 5. Does the concrete in your garage, driveway, or business look like this? Are there oil stains, cracks, deterioration from road salts, and damage from freeze-thaw conditions? Do you have a dusting problem? Constant exposure to these elements can force you to replace your concrete unless you do preventive maintenance to protect it. Concrete Image Maintainers wants to help you by sealing your concrete before it becomes a problem. Remember, concrete isn't indestructible. Protect your investment and avoid replacement costs. Call Concrete Image Maintainers. Come into Ben Hur Ford's extended $10 million inventory clearance sale. Last month's sale was such a success that we're bringing in even more inventory from other Ford dealers. And we're stretching the savings for two more weeks. Buy America's best-selling truck, Ford F-Series, at 4.9%. Buy or lease an F-Series and get $750 cash back. Hurry in today or find out more by calling 1-800-NEW-FORD. Working harder, treating you right, it's Ben Hur Ford. McKinnon Hospital's Caring for Life series presents this medical moment. 
death from trauma is more likely to occur in the country than in the city. And that's why acting quickly when someone is injured can mean the difference between life and death. The Verified Trauma Center at McKinnon Hospital knows how important time is. Our trauma team is waiting for a patient when they arrive, conserving life-saving seconds. If trauma strikes, ask to go to the Verified Trauma Center at McKinnon Hospital. This medical moment is brought to you by McKinnon Hospital because we care about your life. Minnesota, which already in recent months had to contend with a bacteria in ice cream, an outbreak of meningitis, and a rash of deadly strep infections, now has a new one, a mystery illness. This one in Wilmer, Minnesota, is forcing school officials to take some drastic action. Rick Cupcella reports. Five-year-old Grace Swank is out of school today. The Early Childhood Learning Center in Wilmer is closed. No hands for the puppets, no eyes for the books, and no idea when things will get better. All we know is the people here just kept getting sick. But the ones that haven't have really gotten zapped. Ron Werner shared this office with three secretaries, every one of whom took ill. Respiratory problems started shortly after carpet installation. They changed the carpet, but they all stayed sick. In addition to the respiratory problems, they've now developed rashes, skin irritations like bug bites that began to spread, first to different parts of the body, then to different members of the family. School officials moved to shut the place down for fear it would spread to the kids. We didn't want to take a chance of students uh, breaking out with rashes. And we just felt we needed to call additional experts in to do some further uh, specific testing. The victims have been to multiple specialists. They've relayed the carpet and sprayed for bugs and literally froze the children's textbooks to kill any possible mold. Tests have been run throughout the Twin Cities and Washington, D.C. and Canada. Still, nobody knows what's wrong. That is weird. It is weird. It is, uh, the, the word we use is bizarre. It is absolutely bizarre. The illness, which apparently is not life-threatening, is not going away either. So the kids had to. You can't fight what you don't know. Well, I think it's good because I wouldn't want my children to be, you know, susceptible to any kind of bugs or anything like that. So far, no children are infected with the mystery disease, but school is probably out for the rest of the year. A fire broke out tonight at about 6 in the upstairs of 816 South Glendale in Sioux Falls, and it's put a woman and her three children out of their home. When firefighters arrived, they found smoke coming from the upstairs and the people at home at the time out safely. There was a problem initially attacking the fire because of limited access to the interior. Firefighters had the flames under control in about 20 minutes, though. Nobody was hurt, and the Red Cross is taking care of the family of three out of the home tonight. This week, national statistics on home sales across America had some good Melton reports. They're coming back with higher prices locally. Fewer houses are being sold, but the ones that are getting off the market have a larger price tag attached to them. That's what the first quarter figures are showing not only in this state and region, but across the country. January through March, the sales rate of existing South Dakota homes was down more than 6%, but realtors say that doesn't mean our housing market isn't strong. Some parts are just flatter uh, like than others. This price range from 60 to 90 has been extremely active. Uh, then the next phase from probably 90 to 120 is also uh, a, a good price range right now, but that upper price range has been off a little bit, and so that's where we're probably seeing somewhat of our decrease in numbers from a year ago. Although the annual sales rate of existing homes in South Dakota did decrease for the first couple couple months of this year, experts say that will be turned around because South Dakota and especially Sioux Falls have a stable economy and strong job growth and those are the keys to a healthy housing market. And the new figures already reflect that because although South Dakota house prices are also up, actually the 10th highest increase in the country, our prices aren't up as much as the national or regional average. Our market here seems to remain strong. We've had new businesses coming in. Uh, our demand for housing stays real positive and I think that we're just seeing uh, last year when rates did go up, uh, we saw things kind of fall off a little bit, and that came into 1995, but right now, uh, coming into the spring, summer of this year, I think we're going to see a real strong market. Cook says he expects the second quarter figures to be as good as last year, or better. In Sioux Falls, Cammie Melton, News 5. The government charged a second man today with the bombing of the federal building three weeks ago in Oklahoma City that killed 167 people. Terry Nichols, who until recently was just a material witness in the case, appeared in court today, and his son and ex-wife will appear soon before a federal grand jury. Jim Hanchett has more on that story from El Reno, Oklahoma. 
hearing only lasted about 15 minutes. Terry Nichols told his rights and the charges he faces. The FBI says Nichols helped his old army buddy, Timothy McVeigh, carry out the bombing, and he could, if convicted, face execution. Due to the fact that there was loss of life in and around the Murrah building, is the death penalty. The hearing being held in a makeshift courtroom in the visitation area at the federal prison in El Reno. It is the same room where McVeigh made his last public appearance. Both men will be held in the prison here, but in separate areas. Nichols was not asked to enter a plea, and as with McVeigh, he said little. We didn't notice any reaction on the part of uh, Nichols at all. He, he simply looked straight ahead. Uh, FBI agents said a search of Nichols' Harrington, Kansas home turned up detonator cords, blasting caps, and ground up ammonium nitrate, similar to the materials used in the bombing. Investigators also say they found anti-government literature and blue plastic barrels that match fragments found at the federal building. Nichols' ex-wife, Lana Padilla, is in Oklahoma City, meanwhile. She is expected to testify before a grand jury investigating the case. And the couple's 12-year-old son, Joshua, is not believed to be involved in the bombing, although the FBI is checking whether he could be that suspect, John Doe number 2, and whether he was with McVeigh when that rider truck was rented. Four survivors of the blast are suing the company that may have made the fertilizer used in the bomb. Their lawyer, O.J. Simpson attorney Johnny Cochran. The lawsuit alleges the firm failed to reduce the explosive potential of the product. Well, in the meantime, the other suspect in the case, Tim McVeigh, refuses to talk, calling himself a political prisoner. Well, the prosecution in the O.J. Simpson trial today put up its smoking gun in an effort to prove that the former football great killed his former wife and her friend last summer. The blood evidence today carried with it enormously long odds that Simpson was the killer. That was the testimony today. Numbers, big numbers that implicate O.J. Simpson. John Gibson has more. Judge Ito was trying to get the lawyer's attention and they weren't giving it to him. Her counselor sanctioned $250. Get your check with that. A chastened defense attorney, Peter Neufeld, wrote a check. Woody Clark got cash from prosecutor Chris Darden. I'm not going to tolerate that kind of stuff anymore. Are we clear? March over the court, both of you. This outburst from Judge Ito came only 45 minutes after the judge told the jury to ignore comments from the bench that those comments are not evidence in this case. Earlier, O.J. Simpson took a long and close look at the auto radiographs that say he is the killer. The crucial blood spot that was identified as O.J. Simpson's is from the Bundy crime scene. The DNA expert on the stand, Dr. Robin Cotton, said that almost the entire population of the U.S. would have to be searched to find a person other than Simpson who matches. The blood spot on the sock, said to be Nicole Simpson's, carries with it numbers even worse for O.J. Simpson. And that is one in 6.8 billion. The defense counter to this very damaging information is the long-expected contamination and or frame-up theory. Well, uh, the weather tonight, is it going to hold? That's what everybody wants to know. It was a superb day, and looks like half of tomorrow will be nice, but uh, looks like after that it goes downhill. We'll be back at the forecast after you look at the address for Cook's Weather Pick. Jobs are easier with Wagner from Menards. The self-feeding paint roller speeds up painting and cleaning, now $29.99. The seven-piece sprayer kit sprays paints and stains on sale for $73. Improve the look of your lawn with NK Lawn Seeds. Prevail or Northland Lawn Seed is made to withstand drought and stress with easy care, just $5.95 each. Menards is the right choice for home improvement needs. Save big money at Menards. In Aberdeen, it's a budding rock band. In Huron, it's their first batch of cookies. In Yankton, there are 520 people who call it a living. All across the Great Plains, we serve thousands of people in ways that make their lives easier, more rewarding, and more productive. You can call it fun. Call it work. Call it security. Call it breakfast. Call it what you will. We call it service. We're here for you. We're Northwestern Public Service Company. 
deals you like from people you can trust. Rat Chevrolet in Marion, the place to go for the new line of Chevrolets, like the hot new Camaro and the sporty practical Cavalier. Rap Chevrolet also has a great selection of late model GM program and off-lease vehicles. Chevrolets, Pontiacs, Velux, and Cadillacs. You can find used and programmed vans, like these all-wheel drive Chevy Astros. You need a truck? Rap Chevrolet has great deals on all sizes. The deals you like from people you can trust. Rap Chevrolet in Marion, South Dakota. Hi, I'm Sandy with Sandy's Collection for Talls in the Western Mall. I start off my day with the Today Show on KDLT. What a difference today makes. Later on the Tonight Show, Jay's got a great idea for Pulp Fiction Samuel L. Jackson and Garth Brooks. What if you guys switch hats? That'd be kind of a look. <laughs> then it's Garth unplugged in a rare acoustic performance. Plus Supermodel Vendela and Supermodel Mania with Alexandra Wentworth. It's Thursday Night Fever, followed by an all-new Conan NBC Tonight. Well, superb weather today, and looks like we have a suber superb Cook's weather pick for tonight. Take a look at this one from Jessica Jensen out of the flight deck of an S3 Bravo. She was flying up above Rio de Janeiro when this cloud was taken. That is a cumulus congestus. That is the name of that type of cloud. A lot of stratiform look to it, kind of some fuzziness on the top. It's look a little bit like a giant cotton ball. Current conditions in Sioux Falls. We're looking at skies to be partly cloudy. 55 degrees, 46 is our dew point. A light southerly breeze at 9, and our pressure is down to 29.76. Out of Rapid City, their pressure already down to 29.53. Things will be dropping in the pressure throughout the day tomorrow as a new storm gathers in strength and pressures drop, and re we see an increase in the amount of cloud cover across the area. 55 in Huron right now, skies are mostly clear. 53 in Aberdeen, 58 in Pier, 57 with thunder now in the air in Rapid City, and 54 Sioux City, and 51 in Worthington, Minnesota. Daytime high is 66 in Sioux Falls, 72 in Minneapolis. We were one of the cool spots across the region, but we will get close to the 70s tomorrow, despite the fact there will be more clouds moving in. Overnight lows last night, this was not 72 in Bismarck, should have been about 42. 40 in Sioux Falls, 42 in Minneapolis, 44 in Casper, Wyoming, and we'll look for lower to mid 50s tonight across most of the state. Well, it was a record setting spring across many areas of eastern South Dakota. Some of those spots, of course, we don't have records from, but for those we do, Mitchell, 11.4 inches of rain in the first four months of spring. Highmore, 9.9 .9 inches. Again, these were records for the first four months. And Sioux Falls, we are nearing a record of two, or to be the wettest spring so far. 2.3 inches is all we need, and we will hit the wettest springs ever in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Scattered showers and thunderstorms now erupting across western Nebraska. Those are moving northeastward, so here, let's say Mobridge, you may in see a shower towards morning, and here in eastern South Dakota, let's say Watertown, Aberdeen, parts of Huron and down to Sioux Falls, we should stay dry until probably mid-afternoon tomorrow when those clouds do come in and affect our forecast. Clouds started to evaporate late this evening. It was a pleasant one. Temperatures in the mid to upper 50s. Now skies clearing out across most of the state, but clouds do increase once you get west of, let's say, Rapid City. Again, they are reporting thunder at this hour in Rapid City. Severe weather is possible anytime Friday night into early Saturday morning across eastern South Dakota, eastern Nebraska, and northwest Iowa. By the time the west of the re weekend does come around, looks like that will all shift east into Iowa, and cooler weather will stick in across the Rockies as the jet stream stays far to the south for this time of the year, and still all the warm and delightful dry weather that is sitting across the east coast with temperatures in the 70s and 80s. Take a look at the rest of the country. Strong showers and thunderstorms erupting tonight across southern Mississippi and Alabama. Still flash flood watches in effect down there. And there was even severe weather today in northeast Wyoming and southeast Montana. Sheridan, Wyoming had a possible tornado today. And Lodge, Gra Lodge Grass, Montana also tornado touchdown near that region. That severe weather could be in our backyard late tomorrow afternoon and into early Saturday morning. It is all being caused by a new area of low pressure now consolidating across the plains. These two right here, they're going to team up together and increase the strength of this storm system. More showers and storms lighting up the skies tomorrow. More what we call plain pounders. Lots of rain falling from the skies late tomorrow afternoon. Even some snow in the forecast for the Black Hills on Saturday afternoon. And we will see scattered hit and miss rain showers across our region late in the day. Tomorrow daytime highs upper 60s east and mainly the 70s across the rest of the state. For tonight, partly cloudy, we'll call it strangely quiet. 51 degrees, the wind southeast at 5 to 15. More showers and thunderstorms likely by late tomorrow afternoon, 67. The wind's howling south, 15 to 35. Showers and storms tomorrow night, some of those locally severe, 54. The wind south at 15 to 25. Here's your extended forecast showing 
Rain continuing on Saturday, 62 degrees, and then looks like we'll finally dry out for a couple days. 57 on Sunday, a cool one and windy, and then Monday, 65 degrees. So looking pretty good, but does get wet next week. Real wet? Could be. Could be. Of course, could be. The North Central Conference met on the baseball diamond this afternoon in Sioux Falls. That's coming up next, but first, here's a fishing tip from Art Perry. Now's the time to brush up on your skills with fishing tips from Inland Yachts. You know, a lot of people think a jig is just a jig, but there's certain jigs that have different style heads to them, like the swimming fuzzy grub. A uh, prime example would be that each one of these type of jigs is designed for a different, different type of fishing when you're out on the lake. So take a look at the packaging and look at the head and find yourself a head that will apply to the type of fishing that you're doing. It's time to stock up on tackle with a visit to the area's best source for boating and fishing supplies, Inland Yachts. The family boating fund that fits in your garage and your budget. The Johnson Powered Play Buoy from Inland Yachts. It's compact family fun, like me. The Johnson Powered Play Buoy can be pulled by small cars and trucks, so you can take it with you on vacation. It really widens your horizons. Powered by a spirited Johnson outboard, the Play Buoy is just $59.95, plus freight and rigging. Where else can the whole family have so much fun? The Johnson Powered Play Buoy from Inland Yachts. Last time we were here was when I proposed. Ten years. It seems like only yesterday. I told you then how much I loved you. And nothing's changed. The Diamond Anniversary Band. On your 10th, show her you'd marry her all over again. Does the concrete in your garage, driveway, or business look like this? Are there oil stains, cracks, deterioration from road salts, and damage from freeze-thaw conditions? Do you have a dusting problem? Constant exposure to these elements can force you to replace your concrete unless you do preventive maintenance to protect it. Concrete Image Maintainers wants to help you by sealing your concrete before it becomes a problem. Remember, concrete isn't indestructible. Protect your investment and avoid replacement costs. Call Concrete Image Maintainers. From Johnny to Jerry. That